Welcome into Bengals Breakdown. I am Tom Downey. We are in a like battle against our Ravens channel. Now, 700 might sound like a lot of likes we're trailing by. That's one video. If every single person who's watching likes the video, we can frankly flip that and double the lead, etc. So help us out. Let's kick the Ravens butt off the field here. Like today's video and you'll get more ESPN videos as or more NFL videos here on the Bengals as well. I did the full Ron Burgundy thing. We're going to talk about ESPN and their kind of almost manufactured T. Higgins drama. Could he sit out games? Could he be traded to the Chargers? We'll discuss both of those things as part of a fairly lengthy T. Higgins conversation on today's show because ESPN's Adam Schefter later last night says Higgins has not signed his franchise tag and will not report to OTAs next week. In fact, technically speaking, He's not under contract, therefore he's not able to report to OTAs. Now, that also sets up this part we'll get to in a little bit. By not being under contract, you can't be fined for skipping minicamp and skipping training camp or at least parts of it. And this really shouldn't surprise anybody. You know, Higgins is taking a bit more of a hardline stance than Trey Hendrickson is, who would be subject to fines, even uh, for minicamp and training camp. Obviously, OTAs are all voluntary here. As Paul Danner pointed out on Twitter, this is almost a one-to-one -one carbon copy of the Jesse Bates playbook. That's kind of what we're doing here. Like, and I will also make note it's David Mulgetta. It's Jesse Bates and T. Higgins' agent. It is the same from that perspective. The main change from what Higgins did and what Bates did is there was no public trade demand from Jesse Bates. But the steps are almost one-to-one -one in terms of flopping out Bates and putting in T. Higgins, right? Step number one, you be mad about the, 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 the Bengals tag Jesse Bates. Step two, you be, ah, I'm not happy about that from a player perspective. Step three, you skip the workouts, you skip training camp. We're here. We're in step three. Now, step four could be you just watch the preseason game in the suite. You might do that again, and then you report in late August, and you're there in time for, for week one of the regular season. I would prefer if Higgins shows up earlier, but he also knows the Bengals aren't going to rescind the franchise tag. Like, that's the only leverage point the Bengals have beyond, hey, once games come, you ain't getting paid. We know it's, it's awkward. It's not fun. We know where this is trending. He'll be there for week one. Might not be there for July, though. So are you worried about T. Higgins' status with the Bengals? It is today's pinned comment, so if that ad comes on YouTube, that's fine. Take advantage of the ad. Head down to the pinned comment and let me know, are you worried about T. Higgins' status? Y for yes, N for no. Let's continue along with a lengthy Higgins conversation today. Adam Schefter and Dan Orlovsky kind of got into it over a Again, a hypothetical scenario of, well, what if T. Higgins skips games? Let's get to what Schefter and Orlovsky said, then we'll break it down for you. Schefter says, so what's going to happen in the middle of the season if and when his knee's creaky, his hamstring's tight, his shoulder is sore? Is he playing through those injuries weeks before he becomes a free agent, or will he be making a business decision? Now, Dan didn't like this. He clapped back and went, you think a team is randomly going to pay you if you're not healthy? Schefter goes, yes. And Orlovs goes, if he goes and plays the way T. Higgins has, he'll get paid. You're going to tell me that if T. Higgins six or seven weeks in doesn't play, I, I don't even want to put that out into the universe. And I do think there's some very good points that are made by Orlovsky. Now, Schefter tried to cite Jarius Bird as an example of injured guy who got paid. And Bird did miss some time at the beginning of his final year in Buffalo, but he didn't skip any games down the stretch. It's kind of a bad example to use here. Frankly, I think Dan Orlovsky is 100% right. For a player who has had some injury history, uh, the other teams who are going to potentially pay him $25 to $30 million, they're going to want to see Higgins be healthy for a season, Right. And oh, by the way, Shefty, Higgins did that last year. Higgins, in a contract year, set to be a free agent, played through injuries. He was banged up a lot last year. It was the hamstring several times. He missed some games, and in a lost season, battled through it. 
I, it was kind of obvious to me that this is the path this team is going to go down. That Higgins will battle through those injuries. It, it's, I think it's frankly weird to suggest otherwise from, from that perspective, that, that, that he wouldn't go down that particular path. So prediction time. How many games will T. Higgins play in 24? We'll, we'll do regular season only. No, if you want to put 20, I get it at 20. But how many games will he play in 2024? Sound off for me in the comment section of today's video. Now, ESPN continuing their borderline anti bengals campaign also mentioned Higgins a trade to the Chargers as part of a best free agent fits piece. That was the bonus. A Higgins trade because they everybody wants Higgins out of Cincinnati for some reason. Frankly, with it being May and almost June, I think a trade makes little to no sense for Cincinnati. The timing isn't right. You have already budgeted for, accounted for, built your roster, your salary cap based on having T. Higgins on this football team. So trading him now doesn't get you those benefits. You don't get those picks right now. You don't really get to use that cap space because who are you going to use it on, right? There's no free agents you're going to sign to replace Higgins. Might have changed your draft strategy. Maybe you would have drafted Brian Thomas. Probably not, but still. The time to maximize was months ago. Doing it now isn't going to get you the same value or the net return. And Higgins is still a really good fo football player. And we have, I have made this point many times, and I'll continue to make it. The Bengals' goal is to win now. They are not here to sit around and say, okay, well, we'll just try to maximize assets. That is not the path this organization is trying to pursue. Their goal is to win a Super Bowl in 2024. That's really hard to do, but that is what they are trying to accomplish. And it's been made very clear by this organization, despite the um, status involving Higgins and the trade d demand, etc., this is an organization that wants to have Higgins here because they think it gives them the most success for the upcoming season. Now, if you want to get the rookie jersey for the Bengals' first-round pick, that is Amarius Mims, go to chatsports.com slash Amarius Mims. It'll redirect you to the Fanatic site that has the Mims jerseys. No uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. drama on that front. Chatsports.com slash Amarius Mims. That link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. Let's talk defense briefly here. And what we are hoping for is growth out of Miles Murphy. And what I found a kind of interesting comment made by Murphy, uh, he said he is in better football shape now compared to his rookie campaign, saying, quote, there's a difference between combine condition and football condition. I was in great combine condition last year, but not in good football condition. Now, I'm in really good football condition this season. On one hand, look, I get where Miles Murphy is coming from. I, I, I get, and this is kind of kind of what I mentioned Marvin Harrison too. Hey, he wanted to be in football shape. I also find that more of an excuse and less of a reason. There are reasons and excuses for everything in life. I think that was more of an excuse. He had time to get into football shape. Combines in February, and you know, in March he takes some time off. Whatever. He he's got April and May and June and July. Like he should be able to get into football shape by then. Now he was better down the stretch. And maybe he meant more, I was in B shape for ultimate football, and now I'm going to be in A shape. It's another way of saying, I'm in the best shape of my life, which I, I get a little bit peeved and annoyed by because it's just happens every year, no matter what. Everyone's always in the best shape of their life. So hopefully, we get a better version of Miles Murphy this upcoming season. Do you buy that? Do you think Miles Murphy will break out this season? A for yes, B for no. Go ahead and take advantage, potentially, of an ad here coming on YouTube. Go vote in the comment section. A for yes, B for no. Murphy last year had three sacks, three TFLs, 20 tackles. I think most of us would agree that is not exactly the type of, of production, impact, etc., that the Bengals need to have, especially this year, out of their first-round pick. They need to get more from that perspective. They have Hendrickson. He's back. He's at... Uh, OTAs, he's, he's not going to go anywhere. Uh, Hubbard's coming off his own injury. 
Murphy's supposed to be a long-term piece for this football team. He wasn't making a real impact outside of one play in the first half of the season. Most of his production came, he had a great game against Tennessee. Almost all of his production, all but five tackles, came in the, in the back uh, nine after, or after week nine. So I need more of that. If, if we can just double the numbers for Miles Murphy, which I think is doable based on how he played down the stretch last season, it's probably a pretty solid season two. Now make sure you don't miss out on anything here on Bengals Breakdown around the Bengals. Hit that sub button, youtube.com slash Bengals TV for more free Bengals YouTube videos. Hit that sub button as we continue to grow here at Bengals Breakdown. Now, before we go, I did want to get to one kind of funnier story. You might have seen this on social media last night. Thanks, ML Football, for spreading false information. You might have seen the photo we'll get to here in a second of Joe Burrow, these, these, these luscious long locks, the long hair, looking like a dude out of Stranger Things, or I think more particularly, looks like Anakin Skywalker. It's just flipped, right? Here's the problem with this photo. It's fake. It's not real. This, the, the, the hair is photoshopped. Now, I ha this is what was posted by, by James Rapine. My buddy Charlie Clifford posted one too. Joe Burrow rocking the hair today down, down at Bengals uh, off-season workouts. That hair's not long in the back. There's no long mullet. It's longer hair, but it's not like the mullet, you know, rocker-style haircut. So it was photoshopped. And frankly, Joe Burrow, for a good portion of, of the workouts this, this offseason, has been wearing a hat. I think he saw the photos and went, that's not my hair. I have to lay that out clear. I bet they'll ask him about it too, by the way, today. But no, he, he does not have Anakin Skywalker-esque hair. 